The small town of Hillsborough, fiercely unionist, prepares itself to play host to an agreement which most of its inhabitants expect will be a betrayal. And they hang out the flags which have symbolised their separation from the rest of Ireland since it was partitioned in 1921. The Royal Ulster Constabulary, which took over the town centre in the early morning cold, was preparing the way for a deal which would give the Dublin government its first say after 64 years in the way the province is policed and justice is administered. And as Mrs Thatcher's helicopter brought her into Hillsborough Castle, she knew that the way the agreement was presented would be crucial. The problem between Irish and British governments has always been that the only document the two sides could sign would be a document that was deeply ambiguous about what each side really wanted. This time they've realised the dangers of ambiguity and their task here was to create something that wouldn't break down directly they got home and each started putting their own versions on what had been agreed. That at least they avoided by taking part in a joint signing ceremony and giving a joint press conference. The agreement they came to sign is a lot less ambitious than the 1973 Sunningdale Agreement, which collapsed because of bitter loyalist opposition. But it's based on the recognition of the two traditions in Northern Ireland, the Unionist, Protestant, Orange one, and the Nationalist, Catholic, Green one. What they were trying to do was to make the present system, including the police, the courts, and the UDR, acceptable to the Catholic minority, and to make a genuinely devolved government possible in Northern Ireland. I went into this agreement because I was not prepared to tolerate a situation of continuing violence. I want to offer hope to young people particularly that the cycle of violence and conflict can be broken. Our purpose is to secure equal recognition and respect for the two identities in Northern Ireland. Nationalists can now raise their heads knowing that their position is and is seen to be on an equal footing with that of members of the unionist community. This time, unlike last year's summit, Dr Fitzgerald, the Irish Taoiseach or Prime Minister, seemed confident and at ease with what had been agreed. And Mrs Thatcher, though she made no bones about whose side she was on, was careful not to be dismissive about Irish aspirations when she set out her view of the agreement. Its purpose is to try to bring together and to support all of those people in Northern Ireland who wish to end violence and to proceed in a democratic way. That is its purpose. We really entered this agreement in good faith and earnestly to bring that about. The Taoiseach, as a nationalist and a republican, myself as a unionist and a loyalist. Whether unionists and loyalists would recognize her as one of their own after this seems unlikely but the agreement is now in being, and Dr Fitzgerald will try hard to present it as an historic step forward, while Mrs Thatcher will do her best to persuade the unionist majority here that it's all been done in their interests.